A credit rating or a credit score is a numerical score that allows lenders to determine how trustworthy you are in terms of getting a loan. Essentially, a credit score is a summary of your credit report into one number. The higher the score, the more money you guys will be able to lend. Just before I move on, welcome to my channel. My name is Mihir and I upload educational contents such as this. So if you're interested, please hit like and hit subscribe. But without further ado, let's get straight into it. If you're someone like me who watches a lot of videos related to personal finance and things such as that, or you're just someone who's just scavenging on the internet, you must have undoubtedly ran into the FICO score. The FICO score is applicable to Americans, not really us Australians. Yes, although they have multiple credit bureaus, just like us, 90% of America uses the FICO system. If you guys are not familiar with the FICO system, I'll give you a quick rundown of the five distinct categories they have. The first one is amount owed. The second one is your payment history. The third is credit mix. So that could be like store cards, frequent flyer cards, things such as that. The fourth one is new credit. And the fifth one is the length of the credit application. That's applicable in America only, like I said at the start of this video, not in Australia. As you can see from this diagram, each category has their own weighing towards your credit score. For instance, payment history accounts for 35% of your credit score. I don't want to dive into the nitty gritty or just the differences between Australian and American credit bureaus and their credit scoring system, besides the key differences, that's all. In Australia, lenders prefer lower credit limits. However, in America, there's a thing called utilization ratio. So essentially, it's based on how much you're using. So if you got an X amount, it would make sense to get a bigger max because if you get a bigger max, then that X would be smaller. Hence why it makes sense to get more credit there as your utilization ratio would be even lower. Our lenders and credit associations such as Equifast, Experian and Illion have different philosophies amongst them to begin with, not to mention America as a whole in determining whether you are suitable for getting a loan. This also means that your score can vary amongst these agencies. Like I just mentioned before, each credit bureau has their own way of determining whether you're suitable for a loan or not. However, there are some factors that we can look out for. But first, we've got to ask ourselves, what is in a credit report? According to Money Smart, they have separated contents into six distinct categories. There isn't a clear answer as to what each of these bureaus want as they do not disclose this information. However, we can still sort of determine what they might want based on the credit report. But at the end of the video, I'll sort of give you a clear, concise answer according to Money Smart as to what you should do to improve your credit score. First category on this list is credit products you have held in the past two years. This includes the type of credit. So you've got store card, credit card, you've got home loans, personal loans, business loans, things such as that. You've got the credit provider, your credit limit, opening and closing dates of your credit, and lastly, joint application names if you've done such a thing. The second category on this list is repayment history in the past two years. So you've got the repayment amount, how often you paid and if you did was it before the due date or if you missed a payment but you still paid it afterwards just things such as that before I get to number three if you're currently enjoying this video please smash the like button as it truly helps me out making more of these videos and more people will be able to see it but besides that let's keep going on the third category on this list is defaults on utility bills credit cards and loans a service provider may report your non-payment of debt, which is called a default, to a credit reporting agency. However, there are some conditions that they must suffice before doing so. This, by hands down, by all means, is one of the worst things that could come on a credit record or credit history. And this must be avoided at all costs. Because the repercussions of this don't last a year or two, they last a long period of time. And I'll explain in a sec. A service provider can report a default if the amount owed is $150 or more, your service provider cannot contact you, which is called a clear out, 60 days of more have passed since the due date, 
And lastly, the service provider has asked you to pay the debt either by phone or in writing. A default stays on your credit report for five years or seven years in the case of a clear out. Like I said, this is a big red flag to all lenders and credit reporting agencies. This can significantly lower your credit score or even if it doesn't lower it too much, it just makes it next to impossible to get serious loans. Because if you couldn't pay, for example, a utility bill or you just couldn't pay your credit card, then why would they you know, trust you in terms of lending money? This is clearly scary stuff. But obviously, different lenders have different philosophies, different viewpoints, even legibility criteria that they look out for. However, this is something that you must avoid at all costs. As even if you pay down the debt, this will still show on your credit report, but it will just say you paid it down later on. But it's like that saying, precaution is better than cure, and I believe it's highly applicable in this scenario. But if there is a problem on your credit report, I highly encourage you to call up your service provider and negotiate with them. Most of the time, they'd take a small amount of money and they'd fix the credit information that's been given. And it may be wise to do so because like I said, a default stays on your credit file for five years or seven years in the case of a clear out. And this can make it really tough and really hard to get loans, for, for example, home loans, 90 plus years LVR. But before doing anything, I highly encourage you to do your own due diligence because you don't always have to pay them. You can even re repair your credit for free, but most of the time that's gonna take some length period of time. And if you can pay a small fee rather than wait five years, I think it might be better to do so. But then again, do your own due diligence. The fourth category on this list is credit applications. This includes the amount of credit applications you have done, the amount of credit you have borrowed, and lastly, any loans you have guaranteed. And that essentially means if, for example, XYZ person can't pay down a loan, you're responsible for paying down that loan if they can't. Like I said at the beginning of this video, Australian and American financial institutions have different values. Here in Australia, we value a lower credit limit alongside lower credit activity. In America, they sort of reward this because if this person is shown, you know, handling so much debt, that means they're responsible, hence we can loan more. It's the other way around here. The lower credit activity, the better. That means you can't be applying for credit all the time. You can't be going for that credit card, that maybe freaking flyer sort of card, things such as that. You can't do that on a consistent basis. One of my other videos will be uh, assessing how does travel hacking actually impact your credit card? Based on my findings, it doesn't do too much of a damage in the long sort of term. However, it can be a thing that you should consider if you're investing in property, but that's a separate video. The fifth category on this list is bankruptcy and debt agreements. This includes simply bankruptcy, debt agreement, personal insolvency, essentially registered in your name. Just like defaults, it is imperative we avoid these at all costs because they can stay on the credit report for numerous years. The sixth category on this list is credit report requests. Now this is quite surprising as you wouldn't expect that just by requesting your credit report, it comes up on the actual credit report. However, this is not the case for you because if you go on things such as Equifax and Experian or Ilion to get your credit report, that is called a soft inquiry. And soft inquiries essentially don't get registered into your credit report. Hard inquiries do get registered. And like I said, with the amount of credit applications you do, when you make a credit applications, lenders pull out your credit report and that's a hard inquiry what they do. So if you get a lot of hard inquiries, that will show up. And like I said before, the lower the credit activity, the better. So don't worry about viewing your credit report by yourself multiple times as that's a soft inquiry. But besides all of that, if you enjoy this video, please make sure to smash that like button real good because this helps me make more of these videos and at the same time allows more people to see this video. And if you enjoyed and you like content such as this, please make sure to subscribe as I'll keep uploading content such as this or you can check out my previous videos to see if you get value before deciding if you want to subscribe. But besides that, thank you for watching. I hope you have a fabulous day ahead of you. Goodbye.